Thanks for being here today. Wozniak pretty famously said that LSD was one of the things that differentiated Apple from Microsoft. Yeah. And, and I that, think Jobs said that too. And at this organization, uh, we selected, oh, well, apocryphally, uh, Eric Schmidt as CEO because he was the candidate that had been to Burning Man. Um, as an external observer, I'm curious, what are your observations about the intersection between psychedelics yeah. and, and the technology or the tech industry? It's a really interesting relationship. Um, so Steve Jobs famously said too, it had been formative to his intellectual development. And, and I thought it was him, but maybe it was Wozniak who said that uh, Windows would have been a much better product had Gates uh, ever taken LSD. It was like a really mean thing to say, I think. And Gates, and Gates immediately said, but I did, but I did. Um, but it didn't work, it must not have been enough. Um, so, um, and I thought this was the beginning of the tech community's interest in these drugs, and because it's very current. I mean, you know better than I, but I mean, I've talked to lots of people in Silicon Valley, and it's a big part of the culture right now. Microdosing, macrodosing. There's, I mean, I know one prominent te tech company that uses it in their management training. Um, you know, LSD. Um, so, it's there's a lot of you know. Uh, uh, a lot of interest there, and, and, and it is the tech community, as I said, that's funding a lot of this research. Um, but it turns out that um, engineers have been interested in LSD back in the 50s, and that there's this very interesting episode before Timothy Leary and the whole 60s psychedelic story that we, we think we know so well. There was this research period, and um, there was this very interesting character who's kind of a counterpart to Leary named Al Hubbard. And I tell his story in the book. He's a very mysterious figure. He's got, he's involved with the OSS, which became the CIA. He's playing both sides of many worlds. Um, but he had a vision in 1951 that told him he could be involved in a major civilization change. He realized it was LSD. He went to Sandoz, where, uh, which owned the patent on it. It was a Swiss pharmaceutical company. He persuaded them to give him something like a liter bottle of LSD, which probably is enough to trip a third of the population of Earth at that point. Uh, I mean, just an incredible amount, which he keeps buried in Death Valley at his place. And anyway, he's a great character. He's so much more interesting than Leary. So he's, he becomes the Johnny Appleseed of LSD, and, but he's got a different theory. He said he was a kind of a conservative guy. He wanted to turn on the elite. So he was going to do captains of industry, uh, you know, engineers, artists, um, people in the church, the Catholic church. And he would go around with his satchel tripping people. Remember, it was legal, it was legal then. And, and, he beca and he became a very gifted guy. So he uh, has his eye on the tech world as one of the places where you could have this multiplier effect. So he turns on a couple engineers who are working at a company called Ampex, which is actually one of the first Silicon Valley companies in the 50s. They make magnetic tape on which, as you know, all computer information was stored, but also video and sound recording. They had 40,000 people in the valley before it was called Silicon Valley. And, um, and the head of strategic planning, he turned on, and another guy, and, and actually Ampex, for a while, was going to be the world's first psychedelic company. And, um, but the, uh, the president was Jewish, and Al Hubbard was Catholic, and he kept bringing in crucifixes and things, and the, and the president said, eh, go away. And, uh, <laughs> So, but anyway, so these engineers though were so taken with this experience that they um, left the company, a group of three or four engineers, and started a big research, uh, something called the International Foundation for Advanced Research. And they were uh, doing a lot of uh, psychedelic research. And I've always been interested as to why engineers in particular had such a strong reaction to this drug. And I talked to, uh, I talked to a couple engineers about it, and, one, and you can tell me if this chimes with your sense of things, but this guy, this one guy in particular told me that, um, oh, and the, some of the early chip uh, designers were into LSD. It's very hard to design a chip without a computer, but of course, at the beginning, you had to. And you could hold this complex 3D structure in your head uh, with the help of uh, the drug. And this guy um, said, oh, and one of the, sorry, one of the early people at the International Foundation for Advanced Study who was tripped was someone you probably know if you know your history of your industry, but a uh, Doug Engelbart, right? Who invented, you know, the mouse and the interface and email and like everything, right? There was this mother of all demos. Well, that guy 
got LSD from those Ampex guys. And under the influence, they were doing a creativity study. He, he invented something then. It wasn't that profound. It was something he called a tinkle toy to, te to toilet train boys. And it was something you could like aim a stream of urine at and it would make things happen. <laughs> okay, it's not quite the, you know, the mouse, but it was pretty cool. But it primed the pump, you know. Uh, so anyway, where was I? So um, this, this engineer I was talking to said, well, the problem, if you're an engineer as opposed to a scientist, scientists can like, their goal is to reduce problems to the simplest terms. But engineers are faced with an irreducible complexity and number of variables. So the challenge is different. The challenge becomes finding pattern. And psychedelics, one of the things that happens is you find pattern where you didn't see it before. Um, and that, he thought, was why so many engineers found this uh, a useful tool. I think that's fascinating. I, mean, I think there's, John Markham wrote a, an interesting history about Silicon Valley and, and the 60s, and, he, and there's some very good stuff on, on uh, drugs, and he interviewed Jobs about his experience. But um, uh, yeah, it's part of the tradition you're, you're in. Thank you. You're welcome.